So here's the thing, I know that a lot of you are waiting for my part 2 of the Bluetooth Flavors Engineering video and I definitely promise it is coming, I will post it shortly. However, I'm now traveling in the US, I'm here in Austin, Texas and I actually underestimated how hard it is to get a Raspberry Pi in the US. I mean, they're out of stock everywhere, the prices are, instead of being like 45 bucks, it's 170. That's crazy. So. If anybody is in Austin and has a spell Raspberry Pi that they can lend me for a few days just to shoot the part 2, thank you so much in advance. If not, well, I'll shoot it only in two weeks when I'm back in Belgrade. Until then, I want to show you my portable setup that I use to work basically from anywhere, comfortably, and not twisted over my laptop, but at a whole workstation that basically fits in my backpack. And the first thing I'm gonna uh, show you is the roof stand. The roof stand allows you to fit your laptop at eye level while folding into a little stick that you can just open up, position comfortably, and with a keyboard, just work as if uh, the screen is much higher than it is. Folds into a stick, fits into a backpack, and opens up to be a stand, a full stand for your laptop. This is the version 2, it's been discontinued and now uh, they released version 3 which is supposed to be even more sturdy. But this one has been traveling with me for a number of years now and it never disappoints. It handles perfectly laptops from 12 inch to 16 inch um, while being very very comfortable to use. There's a number of knockoffs of this, such as the next stand, which is cheaper and you can find it on Amazon. But trust me, get the original, it will serve you for years. And um, as of the recording of this video, the new stand is $89.95 on Amazon. Next is the keyboard, and I cannot stand laptop keyboards. The old generation MacBook butterfly keyboard was awful to a point when I couldn't even use it. And that is why uh, in the office I have Kikon's mechanical keyboard and when I travel I have Kikon's K3 keyboard. I was actually skeptical about the optical switches in this but I found out that they're extremely comfortable and keeps the keyboard very slim, very light, very portable but at the same time it's a pleasure to type on it. One thing to keep in mind is that when you order that keyboard Make sure to order a protective case for it, because as you can see, mine has banded in the suitcase over time. With that said, I've been traveling with me for a very long time all over the place. And it still works perfectly fine, just a little bit bent out of shape, which I think kind of makes it mine as well. <laughs> Unique. That particular keyboard can connect to three different devices with a touch of a button. So unlike the um, Apple keyboard, um, you can connect it to the laptop, to your phone, and to your tablet. It comes with three different, like you can choose three different switches. I have the blue ones, which are the most, the most clicky ones, but they're not really as clicky as a regular mechanical Cherry Mix blue switch. I can type very quickly on this one, and it works really well with all the devices I'm using, and the battery life is great, while at the same time you can just use a Type-C charger to charge it or just connect it to the laptop and it will charge while you use it in wired mode as well. It is a little bit bigger than the Apple keyboard. Here they are in comparison. And a bit thicker. But the experience of typing in it is so much better. And you can support multiple devices at the same time. So I think it's an easy choice to go with something like the Kikon K3 instead of the Apple Magic Keyboard, which is actually more expensive as well. Since I already mentioned that I would travel with the iPad as well, here's a little gadget. This one is called the Mounty Plus, and the Mounty Plus uh, allows you to mount the tablet to the side of your screen as an extension of your screen. So Apple have introduced recently the sidecar functionality, which allows you to use an iPad as a second screen for a Mac. And uh, with that device, you just attach it to the tablet and attach it to the uh, MacBook and it holds it 
at the same eye level uh, as the MacBook uh, screen. It comes with a bunch of different uh, adapters to attach it to different tablets, different uh, uh, laptops and so on for different sizes. So it can work with uh, uh, the iPad Air, with all kinds of MacBooks, with all kinds of uh, Windows laptops as well. And it's easy to attach it uh, to that as well. An important thing to pay attention to when you connect your iPad to your Mac as a second screen is um, that you have to use a cable that makes the iPad show up in your Finder and Mac OS. Because if you don't, if the MacBook doesn't show in your Finder, then uh, the second screen or the sidecar will still work. However, the MacBook will use Wi-Fi to connect to the iPad, which will make it slower, less stable, disconnect frequently, and even though you're connected with a cable to the MacBook. Keep in mind that one of the best cables to use with your iPad is actually the one that came with it. Yes, that small flimsy one, and not the uh, Thunderbolt cable that Apple sells in its stores, because that one actually only provides charge and not data. But, uh, it provides data, but for some reason, the iPad is not recognized when you connect with it. My camera, on the other hand, is. So I'm not sure what is going on there, but keep that in mind. Use the one that came with your iPad, connect it to your MacBook, and make sure that uh, the MacBook appears in your Finder, and you mark tasks in both the iPad and the MacBook, and then you will get wired uh, sidecar. A good way to test it is you take the, you disconnect the cable from the iPad, and you see that the iPad, uh, that the sidecar loses connection. When you reconnect, it shows you a message switching to USB. The fact is that when you disconnect the cable, after a few seconds, the iPad will reconnect. And that is misleading because actually now it's connected over Wi-Fi. So when you connect it back, it should say switching to USB and then you get the full speed and the full quality. Also, if you use an older iPad, you can use an app called Duet which allows you to use it as a second screen, both with the Windows PCs and with all the uh, devices, all the iPads as well. Next is power. And when I travel, I don't want to carry a bunch of power adapters. So I have this Hyperjuice charger, which is 100 watt and has four different USB ports, two type C's and two type A's. It's much smaller than the uh, adapter that comes with the MacBook while providing more power and more ports. Highly recommend this one from Hyperjuice. I use the Peak Design. I mean, it's no secret I'm a big fan of Peak Design. This is the Peak Design tech pouch. It has a lot of different uh, locations, like different compartments and places to put all your equipment and all your gadgets while you travel. And then when you close it, it protects it and compresses it to a very small size. You can even use uh, some carbines or Peak Designs hooks to just put it on top of your backpack and travel with that uh, easily. Another gadget I love traveling with is this portable hub from JS Oaks, which is basically like a magnetic hub, which has HDMI, Ethernet, test SD micro SD type A type C and uh, 100 watt power delivery. All of that in a very lightweight hub with all the different cables, including type C with 100 watts delivery and the uh, lightning port cables all in the magnetic cover. So you just take that, slap it on here. It even comes with a nice little pouch and you have an HDMI hub with all the ports you need and even power delivery in your pocket. Well, that one is a bit big for a pocket, but in your backpack. That's it. That's how I make my life on the road and work from home from anywhere. Very efficient, very comfortable, and I do not sacrifice the comfort of a desktop while fitting all of that in my backpack. 
I know this is not uh, like most of the videos so far um, and it's not home automation, but it is tech and I enjoy talking and uh, sharing those kind of things. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it or if you didn't, let me know uh, in the comments below. I'd appreciate the subscription and uh, I definitely want to hear from you what else you would want to hear on this channel. In those boxes, you have videos that YouTube thinks you will enjoy watching. And don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next video.